Hey everybody, we are starting out with a new networking series. And in this series, I wanna help you guys understand mesh Wi-Fi, a lot of the features that come with it and kind of explain through the different things that you're gonna be reading on a box to kind of help you make a better decision on how to pick something out that's right for you. Now, I will be creating a playlist for this series to put on the channel, so I recommend going and checking that out as these are being released. We're gonna be talking about things like Mocha, how to set that up. I'm also going to be talking about different router options that you can get on different budgets. And then lastly in the series, we're gonna be talking about your old Wi-Fi router and what you can do with it once you upgrade. So don't get rid of those old ones because we can use those later down the line. Now I've done a ton of networking videos and put them into their own series. One that was really popular was building out your home network. So if you are a beginner, you don't really even know where to start, but you wanna know what products to get and what those products do, I will leave a link for that playlist down below and that can kind of help you get started on building out your own home network. But in this video, today, we're going to be talking about the different features that are offered with mesh Wi-Fi, what they mean, and see if you need them. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into some of these features. All right, so I'm going to assume that you are either at a store looking at a box or maybe searching online to find out the best one for you. I've got a bunch of different options over here, and I want to take a look at their boxes. The first thing that I want to point out is if we take a look at this one right here, this is from TP-Link, and this is their Deco XC75 Pro. If you take a look here, we see it says Wi-Fi 6E. So you're gonna see different options when looking for a Wi-Fi system. Typically, they are going to be Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, and the newest is going to be Wi-Fi 7. Now, those are different Wi-Fi standards. If we look up here, another way for Wi-Fi 6E is going to be AXE. If it's Wi-Fi 6, it'll just say AX, and with the Wi-Fi 7, it's going to say BE. Now, those are the different standards of what they used to be called. Now, they are just Wi-Fi 6, 6E, and 7 just to kind of make it a little bit easier on the different Wi-Fi standards that are coming out. Now, if it fits into your budget, I definitely recommend looking at something that is Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7. Those are gonna have the new six gigahertz band, which is definitely gonna future-proof your setup. Now, the next thing that we're gonna take a look at here is our bands. So this one right here says tri-band. That means it's going to have three different bands inside of it. If we take a look here on the side of the box, it's going to show us the bands that it has. So we see here that we are going to have a two 2.4 gigahertz band, we have a 5 gigahertz band, and then we also have the 6 gigahertz band. So that's the tri band that we're getting out of this system right here. If we want to take a look at another system, here is one from Netgear. So this is the Orbi Wi Fi 6E. This is their 960 series, and this one is a quad band system. So if we take a look on the back of this box, we can see what the four bands are gonna be. So right here, we have got one 2.4 gigahertz, we have two five gigahertz bands, and then we also have that six gigahertz band. So that is going to be the difference between say a tri-band and a quad band system. Now typically with quad band systems, they are gonna be quite a bit more money. So do keep that in mind when you're looking for a system. Dual band is kind of older technology that you might see out there on occasion. Typically that's gonna be the 2.4 and the five gigahertz band. But if we're looking at these Wi-Fi 6Es and the Wi-Fi 7s, those are usually tri-band to quad band. Now another thing that I wanna point out that makes all the difference in the world when you are picking out your Wi-Fi system is the speed of that system. If we take a look at the two systems that I have right here, so both of them are Wi-Fi 6E. We have got TP-Link's Deco. We have got Netgear Orbi. The pricing on these two are quite different from each other, and I wanna show you why. Let's take a look at the Deco setup right here. So on the Deco setup, we see it says AXE5400. Now essentially what that number means is the speed or the bandwidth that you're gonna be able to get out of this system right here. So if we take a look right below that, we see speeds up to 5.4 gigs roughly, or 5,400 megabits per second. So essentially what that means is with all of your devices that you're going to be connecting to this thing, this one can support up to 200 devices, it is all going to be sharing a bandwidth of this speed right here. So 5,400 or 5,400 is the speed that this one is able to produce. If we take a look at our Orbi device, take a look at the back of this one right here, this is the quad band system, and this one right here says AXE 11,000. 
So we're getting double the speed out of this one that we were out of the Neckier one. So even though this one is a lot more expensive, it is twice the speed, even though they're both Wi-Fi 6E. So that is definitely something you wanna look at. So we've got 11,000 speed out of this one. And looking right below that, it's going to give us the speed of each of our different bands. So the 2.4 band is going to be a max speed of 1200. Our two five gig speeds are gonna be 2400 each. And then our six gigahertz speed is gonna give us the 4800. So you can see how each of these are broken out to provide their own speed for their own band. So do keep that in mind when you are looking at your system. That is gonna be the most important thing that you're gonna to wanna to know if you're looking at performance. All right, let's take a break to talk about today's sponsor. Now, quick story for you. I have been traveling a lot lately. Whether it's business or personal, there have been airports, hotels, even cabins in the snow. And with all that traveling, Wi-Fi is kind of a hit and miss. So I started using this little guy right here. This is the TP-Link TLWR 3002 X, and this is their travel router. And it's honestly made things so much smoother. Even though it is tiny, it is super fast. Like 2.5 gig internet port speed fast. Plus it's got Wi-Fi 6, so my laptop and phone get solid speed wherever I am. And here's what I really like about it. Public Wi-Fi always makes me a little nervous, but this router creates my own private network. I just log in once, whether it's at a hotel, a cafe, or wherever, and all of my stuff connects to it. It's that easy. The the travel router has seven different modes, so you can use it in any situation that you need to. You can also set up VPNs, which is really simple. You can do that through NordVPN or Surfshark. It's powered up by USB-C, so you can plug it into the wall or even a power bank. Also on the back of the device is a USB 3 port where you can plug a hard drive into it and essentially share your files with anybody on your network. Another big benefit of taking this on a family vacation with all of our devices is that I can pre-sign all of our devices up to connect to the travel router. So that way when we get to a hotel or an Airbnb, wherever we're staying, all I need to do is get the travel router up online on the internet. And then every device that we turn on is automatically gonna connect to it because I've already pre-set it up. It just makes everything so much easier and less to worry about when on a trip. So yeah, if you're bouncing between places like I am and want reliable, fast, private Wi-Fi in your pocket, this little TP-Link travel router is awesome. I'll drop a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. All right, the next important thing that we wanna take a look at is our coverage area because Covering the size of your home is what's important with these devices. Now, something to keep in mind too when you're looking at coverage area is that you don't wanna just look at your home square footage because obviously you want coverage outside of your house, maybe your garage, your driveway, your backyard. You're gonna want coverage in those areas too. So if we take a look at our Orbi device right here, this one here is going to be able to cover up to 6,000 square feet. So we're getting 6,000 square feet of coverage with this device. You can see another right here, and that's gonna be out of these two devices. So essentially each one of these devices is going to be able to cover about 3,000 square feet. Now the good thing with mesh Wi-Fi systems is you can always add more of these devices to it. So let's say I buy a two pack, it's covering 6,000 square feet and I wanna add another one to there. I can go buy a single unit, add it to my setup and add an additional 3,000 square feet. If we take a look at our deco setup right here. So our deco setup, this one's gonna be covering 5,500 square feet out of these two devices. Now, I wanna jump a little bit into Wi-Fi 7 and talking about those devices. Now, knowing what we know from what we've just talked about, we can take a look at our Wi-Fi 7 setup right here. So this one is from TP-Link. This is their BE63. And just taking a look at this one right here, this one is going to be giving us speeds of up to 10,000 megabits out of all three of these devices right here. This is a Wi-Fi 7 whole home system. If we take a look here on the side, we can see some of our stats. We have got our wireless, we've got our six gigahertz speed, we have also got our five and our 2.4. So we can see this is a tri-band setup. Now, another thing that I wanna point out are the ports on our device. So let's take a look at those really quick. If we take a look at our Orbi setup, so this is going to be the Orbi 960 series. This one right here has a 10 gig internet port. So whatever you're getting for your internet can be plugged into here and go up to 10 gigs. Next, we have an ethernet port of 2.5. This is a good port to connect, say, to your other router. And then the rest of them here are only a gig. I'd recommend, if you're looking at the ports on the back, to at least 
have a gig on every single one of these ports. We're kind of getting to the point right now where 2.5 gig is going to be the new standard going forward, but at least have a gig on everything else. Now, obviously that is not going to apply to everybody, but I would say anybody who is tech savvy and like streaming and gaming 2.5, we're kind of getting there in the next year or two. Now, if we take a look at the satellite itself, we've got different ports back here. So let me really quickly show you this. Here is the main router itself. You can see right here, it says router. This is what is plugging into your modem, your cable modem, whatever is getting internet into your house, that is going into the main router that you see right here. So this is going to be in our main room. The next is that we're gonna take a satellite here and a satellite is something that we are going to be able to put anywhere else in the house to extend our coverage. So that is why this one here looks a little bit different. We have got that 2.5 gigahertz port on the back right here, and then the rest are going to be the one gig ports back there. Give you a closer look at what that looks like. Now, if we take a look at our TP-Link Deco, this one's gonna look a little bit different. So this one right here is actually their new Wi-Fi 7. You can kind of see the seven across here. This is the Deco Wi-Fi 7, and the back of this one right here, all four of the ports are gonna be 2.5 gigs. So we're getting fast 2.5 gig across the board with this one. And that's kind of why I like this one so much is that we're getting Wi-Fi 7 out of it. We're also getting a full 2.5 gig ports all the way across. I'd love to see a 10 gig on there, but that's going to be in their more expensive setups. Now I want to show you guys a few more features on here. So let's take a look at the box. We've talked about our different port setup. We have got our mesh protocols. We have got our wireless and wired backhaul. So essentially what that is, is that it's what our devices use to connect to each other. So each one of these devices connect to each other. Let's say this one right here is the main router for the house. And then we've got our two satellites out here that are providing all of our coverage. These can connect to each other through a wireless backhaul, meaning that they will wirelessly connect to each other, allowing all of your devices to connect to our main one right here. Another way is to do a wired backhaul where you plug an ethernet cable between the two. That is going to give us the fastest speeds possible, but it's not always possible to run wires between your devices unless your house is wired with ethernet. Luckily mine is. Now there is another way to get around this and that is if you have coax in your house. So if you remember the old cable systems that used to be in our house for cable TV, you plug your coax cable into the wall. Well, you can actually use those cables for data transfer and that's gonna be through something called Mocha. And that's something that we're gonna be going and diving a little bit more into in our next video. So make sure you are or stay tuned for that. But that is going to allow us to connect an ethernet port into our coax cable, transfer it through our walls to get that wired backhaul and the fastest connection possible. Now, two more features that I want to talk about on our device. We have got our security. I would definitely recommend trying to find something that has WPA3. That's gonna be our fastest connection. And then here are some of our Wi-Fi 7 functionalities. The one I wanna point out is MUMIO or multi-user, multi-in, multi-out. Essentially what that is, is that is a technology that was introduced during Wi-Fi 5. And essentially what that would do is it would let multiple devices communicate with your router at the same time. Prior to that, the router can only connect to one device at a time and would have to do that really quickly, switching between devices, which made it pretty slow. This feature right here allowed it to connect to multiple units at the same time, which definitely helped pick up speed for our communication. Well, with Wi-Fi 7, we have a brand new feature, and that is this one right here, which is called Multi-Link Operation, or MLO. MLO allows your one device to connect to multiple bands. So we talked earlier about having a 2.4 gig band, a couple of five gig bands, and then that new six gigahertz band. Well, if you have a device that has MLO, it's able to connect to multiple bands at the same time, essentially establishing multiple connections and increasing its speed even more. So that is new with Wi-Fi 7, which is just making our speeds with Wi-Fi 7 so much faster. So that is another feature that I recommend getting if it is within your budget. Now, there are a few more features that I'd like to point out for you to keep in mind when you're purchasing your system. And that is, does it have guest wireless? Do you have the ability to turn on a 
guest network for your guests to connect to so you're not just giving out your username and password to anybody that comes over to your house. That is definitely something I recommend setting up. The next thing that I would look for are parental controls, if it has that feature, and then also what other security features it has. If we take a look at our Deco system, our Deco system has something called Home Shield. So that is the TP-Link version of their security system. If we take a look here at Netgear, they have something called Netgear Armor. Now that is going to be their security software. Something to keep in mind with both of those is both of those do require an additional subscription. So you do have to pay it monthly for that. With some of these systems right here, it does come with say a few months or maybe a year free for that service. But after that, you will have to start paying for that. So keep that in mind. Now, something that I would definitely keep a look at when you are searching for this stuff is that are any of these features behind any kind of paywall, meaning that they are not going to work unless you have that subscription. The number one being the parental controls and some security features are typically bundled up with those subscriptions. So you have to pay for that subscription to get those parental controls. So that's something to look into when you are picking up a system. All right, now let's do a final rundown of the top things that you should be looking for when picking up a system. First one is going to be how many bands does it have? Is it a tri-band, is it a quad band? Next is going to be its speed. What kind of speeds are you getting out of this system? Are we getting a 5400 meg setup or are we getting a 10, 11, thousand meg setup. Are we looking at something like this with an AXE 5400 setup with those speeds and coverage? Or are we getting something that's gonna be a little bit more powerful with the Deco BE 10,000? Now that's gonna be almost twice the speed as our previous version. Next in line of importance is going to be the coverage that you're getting. And then lastly, I would say is taking a look at the ports on the back. What speeds are you getting out of those ports? Make sure they're at least a gig, which I would think everything that's being sold now is going to at least be a gig. I would prefer to have everything be a 2.5 gig all the way up to maybe a 10 gig system. That would be kind of really future-proofing yourself down the road. Well, I hope talking through some of these features helps you kind of understand what to look for and also evaluate kind of what your needs are. I see a lot of people who take a look at a system and they just look at the Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, or Wi-Fi 7 and just assume that they're all the same. But within each one of those, there are a wide range of additional features that are going to affect your speed and performance. So I hope this information was helpful. If you guys want to know how to build out your home system from the devices that you need and how to set all of those up, be sure to check out this video right here. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.